Good evening, guys. Uh, welcome to first edition of Cast Talks, where we'll be diving into the world of static timing analysis. So, STA is an essential part of any digital design, and uh, IEEE NITK is glad to have its first dedicated talk series to the Circuits and Systems Society. Today, we are joined by Shashank Kolla, NITK alumna of batch of 2022. He currently works as a performance architect at NXP Semiconductors. We are very excited to have you here with us today, Shashank. Yes, I think Shashank. Hey, thank you. Thank you, Vakanashri. I think I will switch on the camera. <laughs> okay, yeah, so hi, guys. Yeah, I'm Shashank. Also, shall we, shall we start then? Or we'll wait for some. Okay, okay, okay. I'll just share the screen. I think it's visible. Yep. Can I even confirm? Okay, cool. Okay, so before starting, uh, guys, so one secret is like whatever I'm talking will be available online in some or other website or some videos or something else. So, uh, like uh, what I'll do is like or anyone else will also do is like we'll compare from multiple resources and uh, we'll give some our opinion as well on the topic. But like for you guys to get a lot of benefit from it, like uh, try making this an interactive session. Uh, ask as many doubts as you want. Like I lot uh, I like from this virtual mode, so I, I can't know like whether you guys are understanding it or not. So yeah, do ask whatever questions, be it on STA or my job or placement process in general, whatever you guys feel. Uh, you can interrupt in between also, or you can put it in chat, or uh, someone, Kruti or someone can let me know if there's any questions in the chat. Yeah, okay. So having said that, uh, we'll start STA. So STA is status timing analysis, first thing. Yeah, uh, so what I'll be covering is, there are two aspects in STA. One is how STA is being used in industry, basically in which uh, flow, in the design flow, where it comes, like if the industry people are asking STA in interview, that means they're using it somewhere, right? So what are the job profiles where uh, STA is being used? Some points on that I'll try covering. Then of course, for the interview, what all they ask, some examples, questions also, something, yeah, something like that we'll cover. Okay, uh, the first thing is the SASIC design flow. Um, this is one common thing which all of us should know and I think most of this is covered in course, like uh, many aspects of this. The first aspect is the specifications, like the architecture specifications which we do. Yeah, uh, so once this is in general written in C, uh, so once we write the architecture specifications, we give that to design engineers who will write the design in our way. So that design will be a called RTL. Once we get the RTL, we should make the RTL like uh, in class, maybe we are not told to write the synthesizable very log, but in industry, we should write the code which is synthesizable. Uh, yeah, so once we do synthesis, we'll get the gates, the netlist. It's also called as a pre-layout netlist, netlist. So till all this thing is like very log and C coding, once we get the netlist, we'll try getting the constraints as well. Uh, in real life, uh, like we'll have a lot of constraints, right? So on uh, frequency, some timing, etc., etc. There will be a lot of constraints. So using the gate netlist we have and the constraints, we'll start the physical design flow which is the floor planning, placement, routing, etc. So once we start this, like placement routing is the last part. We'll get the entire uh, post layout net, net list and we'll also get the parasitics. So STA comes after all this. There is one pre-layout STA as well. I'll, I'll tell about that also. Uh, okay, I'll start from formal verification. Basically, th these are three things in general which uh, people talk. Formal verification just checks whether this RTL and the gate netlist, which we got after synthesis, whether they both are same or not. That's formal verification. What is this pre-layout STA is like, it just take the gates, the netlist, which we have, 
and check some timing analysis and it does but like the results of this will not consider as the final results the results of this will use to generate the constraints basically this preload this is not what is most important or something the main sta what to be do is this post layout sta for this we take constraints this uh, post layout netlist parasitics every every information we'll take and we'll do this post layout sta this is where in the design flow at the last sta comes up so uh, yeah uh, this we have taken from mptl like this you can look if you want this there's an advanced course by a broadcam engineer on nptl uh, here they covered a lot of this asic uh, understanding uh, understanding things not very much required for interviews maybe yeah so and there is one sta tool called prime time this is a synopsis tool uh, if people like i don't know whether we have access in edu or not like if we have edu access you can check like prime time is like one of the best tools for sta which people use so jobs in real estate industry uh, till i to be honest till i joined nxp i didn't know the engineer so there is a profile called sta engineer what they do is just sta so yeah that's one job which involves full sta uh, and there are other jobs like uh, validation verification people they also use sta a lot uh, while checking they may not uh, they use it in indirect way but uh, they also still require a lot of sta so these two profiles they do require a lot of sta yeah so some important points before going to the concept yeah so we saw where sta comes in the vlsa design flow right uh, so now if you see sta checks all possible timing paths it's not vector driven uh, vector driven as in uh, what we'll say uh, it's not like we'll give some input and check the output no that's not the case in sta sta is, does not check the functionality uh, in sta we don't care whether it's working correct or not is it timing checks are done so that it just checks the timing performance of the circuit we don't care about the functionality so sta is like it's divided into two parts one is the delay calculations we'll check the delay between in various paths there, there will be various data paths and clock paths right so we'll check the delay and then timing checks timing checks we do only on the min and the max delay paths so oh, thankfully we don't need to do the timing check on all, every path we'll just do on the worst case scenarios yeah, so and of course sta should guarantee that chip works across different corners or operating conditions like pressure voltage temperature it should work in the minus 30 to plus 50 whatever degree centigrade is there so yeah so you should do all these things and one more important thing is sta includes check on setup hold and many more aspects so in our interviews people generally ask only these two setup and hold but there are other things as well which is called this recovery removal constraints some other user specified constraints clock, clock gating drc like a lot of things i do like so in this talk i'll be focusing more on the setup and hold part i do have few slides on the other things we'll see if time permits will go on to that yeah so we saw uh, vlsa design flow where sta fits in then we saw a few points about STA, important points uh, like in general about STA. So now we move on to setup and hold time. This is the main concept. Like in interviews, STA means setup and hold time for us. Uh, yeah. So this is the diagram which I'll be focusing on uh, like a lot of times to just understand the STA. Yeah, before moving that, like, uh, Kruti, can you help? Like, uh, are the participants mostly third years or like are they fourth years? I think mixed up. Uh. So I can assume there are people who don't know STA at all. Like, uh, or yeah, okay, okay, please, okay, yeah. So I'll be going from basic. Even people who know STA, still it's uh, you can like you'll get to know how we can apply the concepts to the uh, solving things. Yeah. So this is the diagram which we will we'll see a lot. This is, yeah, of course, VLSA expert. This is the uh, only website which I referred during my internships, uh, preparations, uh, like this, 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 you can refer this like pretty good for all the interview purpose. This is really good. Yeah. So coming to this, here we have a Dean, which is the data input clock. It's a clock input. 
and we have a system we don't care what is inside the system we assume this flip flip flop is ideal as of now yeah, so d in also has some uh, logic be uh, before reaching d clock also has some logic before reaching c and both have their individual delays if both of these delays for equal piece it's a ideal situation no nothing no need to do any sta fine but ideally it won't happen right uh, so the d in will have a different delay clock will have a different delay so now there are two conditions either d in will reach first or clock will reach first so if you see the two conditions delay of d in is greater than delay of clock or delay of d in is less than delay of clock the two conditions we'll see both the conditions what will happen in those cases yeah so the first thing is data reaches after the clock that means uh, the delay of this data input is more than delay of clock so we know this thing right how d flip flop works uh, when this uh, assuming this uh, positive edge trigger d flip flop we know that when the date when the positive edge of the clock comes here the data here at that time will be captured so our goal is when the clock comes at this positive edge comes at this edge we want the correct data to be here so now we do what condition we took is uh, d in is coming late right so if d in comes late uh, the positive edge will go off so the data will not be captured so what needs to be done so in this like we can common sense will tell us okay d in is uh, pretty slow here so we should give d in much before than we give clock i mean here both should not be given at the same time we'll give d in some time before only so that that will match up the delay here correct right yeah so d in is uh, given ts time before the positive edge of uh, clock so this ts is what delay of d in minus delay of clock yeah to counter for the extra delay we are uh, giving d in ts times before this ts is called setup time basically so in uh, standard words uh, how we tell is data should be stable ts time before the positive edge of clock at uh, the clock pin yeah uh, so setup time arises when data reaches after the clock yeah and also like we consider the worst case for all the calculations so worst case is what clock reaches very fast data reaches very slow that's the worst case right so we consider minimum delay of the clock and maximum delay of data this this understanding of this concept is like extremely important how how i solve problems is like i'll never go with the equations or something i'll just take this thing this idea basically maximum delay of data minimum delay of clock for setup time okay yeah uh, so this is the setup time i'll just keep on a uh, check of clock also okay yeah whole time so the first condition what we took is data is coming slow clock is coming fast so the other condition clock is coming slow data is coming very fast so this is the condition that delay of this data is less compared to delay of the clock so in this condition what happens of course right oh, it's very clear that data should stay for some time it should not go off till the clock comes data should stay it should wait for the clock to come so that amount of time which it should stay is delay of clock minus delay of dean right yeah delay of clock minus delay of dean this much time it should stay there the data so again in standard words data should be stable for th time after the positive edge uh, at the clk clock so this th is called the whole time like it's very synonymous right the time the name hold it should the data should hold there for the th amount of time again we are considering worst case for all the timing checks so what will be the worst case uh, data reaches very fast clock reaches very slow so maximum delay for clock minimum delay for the data so this is this is how we do hold and shut up uh, i hope this is clear or uh, any queries are welcome on this 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 is the main thing these two to be honest like if you ask me these two slides can cover up 
all questions which can come on STA. They'll never ask anything beyond this actually. This concept, these two are the concepts which will cover all the STA questions. This very simple concept, but the questions will be tricky. Okay, so I'll, I'll move on. If, if any queries are there, you can ask later also. Yeah, so we saw set up and hold for a system. So now we'll see for a flip-flop. What is set up and hold for a flip-flop? Yeah. So if you see, this is a deep flip-flop diagram. This also looks like a system, right? Although we just did a rectangle, this is a system. So deep flip-flop is with this one of the diagram for deep flip-flop. There are many such, uh, like deep flip-flop, there is not a single way to do it. There are multiple ways. You can use JK flip-flops, you can use some master-slave configuration, some, some random things you can do and build a deep flip-flop. So the internal circuitry can be different. So if the internal circuitry is different, uh, it's for sure that this uh, setup and hold time will be different for every flip-flop. So the first thing is, will there be setup and hold time? Of course, yes, because this D, Q, they're far away, like they do have clock, Q. There is some internal delay, right? All these are not ideal circuits. So there is some time required for these signals to come. So there will be some setup and hold time and they'll not be equal for all flip-flops. It will be different for different flip-flops because the parasitics will be different. The internal circuitry will also be different. Yeah, so they will be different. So again, the same idea for calculating setup and hold. What if D comes first? clock comes last, like what will happen? Clock comes first, D comes next, what will happen? The same thing. So if you see the definition, setup time is the minimum amount of time the data signal should be held steady before the clock event. So that the data are reliable, like data are reliably sampled by the clock. So again, like uh, this, this gives sense, right? Uh, and the whole time also same, like it's the minimum amount of time the data signal should be held steady after the clock event so that the data are reliably sampled. This is after the clock because here clock comes first. So after the clock also comes the data should be there. I mean data comes first. So after that comes it's, it should be there before clock also. If you see here, yeah, whole time data reaches before the clock. The data reaches after the clock. So this is like the same thing. Okay, I have a few examples which may make the concepts clear. I hope people are there on the call. I'll just check. It's pretty yeah, 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 Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, people are here. <laughs> okay. So you guys, if you have a pen or paper, you can try doing this. So this is the thing. Uh, here like, it's a, it's a standard example, which will be available on many websites. Uh, so what is this is like, we have two flip flops. This is like standard, what do you call uh, examples in which we can understand uh, things. This is the sending part. This is the capturing part. FF2 is the capture part. FF1 will send the data. So clock is here. This delay, you can see minimum is one, maximum is two. And there will be a delay from clock to queue. This is called CQ or clock to queue delay. That also given nine, nine is minimum, maximum is 11. Also you'll have delays in all these wires, all other gates, etc. So here also you have the, all these delays. This is there. And there's a hold and shut up thing. So here we should check whether there is any hold or setup violation. One, one small thing what we do is we check hold for that clock signal. I mean, if you're considering a clock uh, signal, which will be here, we'll check for the same clock signal here. Setup will check for the next clock signal because uh, if you take a clock signal somewhere here, I'll try using a jam board as well. Uh, I guess I should go here. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, 
these are like two positive heads so in the diagram i showed flip flop one will get the data at this clock edge flip flop two should get the data at this clock edge not at the same clock edge right if you see the slides yeah so the clock edge at which this is receiving data this should receive at the next clock edge not at the same we are not expecting at the same clock edge so setup time is calculated in the next clock edge basically so this one uh, thing which people in general do remember uh, i guess we can stop for a while here uh, you guys can try solving this basically we should check whether there is any setup or hold delay here can someone uh, or fourth year or third year unmute and just tell which is the data path here like i discussed right there are two things one is data path other is a clock path so clock path will give the delay for clock data path will give delay for the data the data path should be the one from the clock to view flip flop one then the inverter then again the next flip flop right and uh, okay so this is the clock path, i mean data path so the clock path will be direct right yeah the clock and the yeah. buffer and then. yeah okay uh that's kruti right who told yeah unmuted okay now not kruti someone else any fourth year or third year i hope okay there are few more on call uh can someone of you like tell which is the uh, okay for we'll consider setup time now setup time is uh, when do we consider setup time if you see the slides yeah data reaches after the clock that means maximum delay for the data will take minimum delay for clock so can one of you tell what is the maximum delay for data here the first flip flop or the second no i want the data uh, both the flip flops will be there data is getting passed from here right so from mm. the point it's getting passed till it reaches the point here so maximum so the will be 13 so you're telling maximum will be 13 huh? yeah. it will be 2 and 13 ah, ha, ha, how Can you please? Two nine two. Two two is okay. Okay. See, data path starts from here actually. Till clock comes, you don't have data, right? Data can't go to D, can't go to Q till clock comes. So the data path will start from the clock till this clock point and clock to Q. Like there is a delay from clock to Q. and so then of course this yeah so from here you can have to start oh okay so 13 plus 13 26 yeah okay so we got this maximum delay for data is 26 so minimum delay for the clock is pretty straight forward here 3 uh, i mean 2 5 2 7 7 2 9 so this is like the delay for the clock but as i mentioned right uh, we'll take the next period of the clock here okay this thing is not here like the clock period is 15 nanoseconds so that's the given thing yeah so uh, any any uh, answers on setup like any what do you understood about setup something like that you know guys so we got to know what is the maximum delay the data can take and minimum delay the clock can take the second period of clock which can come here second period basically 15 plus the minimum here 5 to 7 plus to 9 15 plus 9 24 so two seconds right 26 minutes yeah. 
no uh, this is the thing here i am not uh, telling about the whole setup as of now so it will it will take that much time right 2 yes yeah, so 5 to 7 9 plus 15 24 24 yeah uh, data path it was 26 so yeah 26 minus 24 there are there's a difference of 2 seconds yes uh but like so the flip flops here are not ideal now right uh, so we have hold and setup so in the setup analysis we'll try looking at the setup thing what setup says is like the data should come 4 seconds before what setup says is like data should come 4 seconds before clock for the data to be captured properly the sort of flip uh, setup of a flip flop says what hold says is like data should stay for 2 seconds after the clock edge comes so basically it's not like uh, it's, it's, we can a very rude example is like uh, consider it as, a, it as an airport like you need to go sometime before and leave sometime after after it's not like uh, when the flight is there you'll go at that time once it climb comes up you'll go that's not that will not happen in real scenario so it's something like that only so setup is like we should it should stay it should come 4 seconds before so is it coming here 4 seconds before no yeah it's no right yeah so I mean, yeah, that's the yeah that's the setup violation okay so if you if you okay now we will see the hold scenario so in hold what we do see hold data reaches before the clock so that means maximum delay for clock will take minimum delay for data so yeah uh, can one of you tell minimum delay for data what is the minimum delay minimum delay is 18 uh, 18 uh, 9 2 11 12 12 6 18, it's, it's, okay yeah 18 so the maximum delay for clock that is also, right, that is 15 9, 3, 12, yeah, 15. So, what hold says is like, so this, this, what hold says is like, the data should stay for two more seconds of, like, a clock is there, data should stay for two more seconds, right? So, the clock will be at uh, 15. Is the data staying for two more seconds? Oh, one clarity, one clarity here we can get is like in setup what we what we are checking is whether the data is coming at that point or not. Here what we are checking is whether the data is staying at that point or not. This 18 seconds what we got right, that's the time which the next data takes to come. Okay. So till then we have the previous data. Okay. So the clock, so clock comes at 15. Yeah. After two if you take 17. So at 17, we still have the previous data which we can sample, correct sample. Yeah. Because in clock, we didn't consider the next clock, right? Next clock, if you are considering, we should add 15 again, the clock period, which we did in sample, sampling this set setup time. So here we didn't consider the next clock cycle. We consider the present clock cycle only. Uh, I hope I'm getting it uh, yeah. correct, right? Uh like, can you explain again why in this scenario we are not considering the previous clock cycle? Yeah, yeah, okay. So, in setup, what we did, what uh, what we considered is, we have the first data coming at the first clock edge, we are getting the data here. At the second clock edge, we will get the data here. That's, that's how it works, right, first thing. Uh, because the data, it will take one clock edge to capture. At the next clock edge, this data will come here and it will be captured. That's the setup. So in setup calculation, we'll consider this. That's just general common. So in hold, what we are checking, whether the data which was there before only, is it still there when the clock comes? So we are just checking for one cycle here. We'll check how much time this clock takes to come here will not, uh, this clock would have gone here also, I know that. It will go here also, here also. 
but when it goes here this data will take some time to come here right that is here 18 when the clock starts no. here it will take 18 nanoseconds to go here this data so before that this clock will reach here also this time it's taking 16 i'm not 16 15 so it's taking 15 seconds to go here here the data will come in 18 seconds so our required hold time is just 2 seconds I mean nano seconds everything is nano uh, so what our requirement is like when clock goes here we'll have a previous data here it should stay for 2 mm. more seconds 15 plus 2 is 17 till 17 if the data is here it's fine we are having till 18 so after 18 nano seconds the next data will come okay uh i hope i did explain okay i'll try explaining in this also once yeah but i can understand yeah okay yeah so this is the thing this if you can consider as some data so at this age this data oh okay. yeah okay but it's uh, i don't know it's more difficult only to explain uh, uh, so when the clock edge comes this data will start moving towards this i can say that right this data will start moving towards this this process to complete the maximum time it takes is 18 nanoseconds i mean minimum time so minimum we want when the clock comes here minimum we want 18 nanoseconds for this data to come here meanwhile this clock will not just go here it will go here also so that time is 15 so when it goes at 15 nanoseconds only here it, there will be a previous data not this data and we want the previous data only to be sampled here we don't want this data to be sampled because this data will consider in the next cycle so the previous data like if this is ideal at 15 only it's peace but the it has whole time right 2 seconds 2 nanoseconds so what we take is 15 plus 2 so we want this the, the previous data to stay till 17 in other words the next data should not come till 17 nanoseconds and that's being hold here because it's coming at 18 nanoseconds so this whole check gives success but there was a setup failure i hope i that could understand one small doubt yeah the reason we consider that uh, the clock part in the the 1 nanosecond and 2 nanosecond clock which goes through the data path yeah in whole time is because we are dealing with old data right uh which is, are you telling about this data part yeah, yeah, this yeah, one yeah. one that part that see this will consider in setup and hold both okay this basically this is used to calculate the delay in the data data doesn't start here actually it starts here that's one confusion we have what we consider data path as d to q But data path is not D to Q. It's from this clock to this clock edge, from here to Q. This is the data path. But I believe that so we calculated setup time. We omitted that part, right? No, no, no. We we consider this also. Like if you see in setup time, what we considered, we consider maximum delay in the data path. So maximum delay okay. is what this two plus this eleven thirteen plus two fifteen fifteen plus nine. Twenty-four plus two, twenty-six. Or, right. yeah. So, like this will always consider. Like uh, this has nothing to do with uh, which data we are calculating. Like this, this, this is like every time we'll consider while calculating the data. Only this clock thing will change for setup and hold. For setup, we are looking at the next data. Basically, uh, the date. when the clock comes right uh, 
it will go here also here also when the clock goes here this data if we want to capture it here we'll wait till the next clock cycle that's when the setup violation may happen so we'll check for the next clock cycle the setup hold what we are checking whether the previous data is held or not so for that we'll not add again the period and do all right yeah i got this got it uh, okay. i have a doubt yeah uh, can you explain that uh, setup uh, time part once again the whole time okay. i understood setup okay okay part. okay so okay so setup time i'll show you so setup time is this mainly this is the thing okay uh, what we are considering is there is a maximum delay in data path minimum delay in clock it means data takes a lot of time to come but clock will come very fast so what should happen in that case if clock is coming very fast we should send data much before clock if both are starting at the same point then of course clock will reach first so what we are making we are making data to start at a much earlier point so that data will come at the time when clock reaches this is the idea right yeah. so now we'll apply that idea here so we calculated what is the maximum delay that you got it right maximum delay how we calculated uh yes okay so maximum delay came to 26 uh, i think i do have this yeah so max uh sorry for the handwriting yeah max delay is 26 uh so here again if you see what's the minimum i mean how fast can can clock come and this clock of course i'm telling right if you if you just check just take this delay this is like this will capture not the data coming here this will capture the previous data here so what we'll do we'll add one period more that means if you see okay 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 so if you consider this as a clock at this clock edge we are getting data at ff1 at this clock edge we are getting data at ff2 what uh, by this what i mean is like at this clock edge there will be some data at ff2 i'm not saying there won't be any data but uh, the d which be here no for this to come here it will take one more clock cycle so this will be the previous data at here this will be the this data at here so yeah uh, so this is what the clock thing so now here if you check the minimum delay for the clock how much it is it's 2 plus 5 7 plus 2 9 minimum is 9 and i told the clock period is 15 so setup means what we should check when this clock comes can we get this data here so to check this data since we are checking we will consider this period that means this 15 so 15 plus 9 is what 24 if the flip flop was ideal at 24 second 24 nanosecond we want the data to be here but the flip flop is not very ideal we have a setup time here so the constraint here is setup time is 4 nanoseconds so the constraint here is the data should come 4 nanoseconds before the clock that mean the data should come at 20 only and when we calculated we got the data is coming at 26 So there is a big setup violation here. Ah, oh, was it clear? 
ആണോ യാതൊരു ഡൗട്ട്സ് എനി ഡൗട്ട്സ് യു കൻ ആസ്ക് ഇഫ് യു ഹാവ് ഡൗട്ട് സ്റ്റിൽ ഐ വിൽ ബി വെരി ഹാപ്പി ടു ആൻസർ ദ was i clear this this thing is very much important okay we should this should not be a thing to remember that uh, we should not remember that we are taking the next clockets for setup no no that's not the way we should solve problems we should know why we are taking the next clockets this this is something like which we should understand this should be like common sense for us uh, uh, if that is not the if that didn't happen you can tell me again i'll try putting this in different words but uh, this thing is very much important we should not remember any damn thing here only thing is remembered is what is setup what is hold hold is like we should hold the data for some time setup is like the data should come before the clock arrive for some time so these two are the only thing we should remember uh any any further questions on this Okay. So I do have another problem. This actually Kruti sent me this. Uh, I thought this is a pretty good problem to understand the concept what I told here. Uh, can you guys come up with the... Sorry to disturb. Yeah, sure, sure. We have a doubt in the chat. Okay. She is asking, there is setup violation without considering the setup time condition in this again. yeah exactly exactly yes yes uh, i thought someone will tell that yes here even without considering like the data is not coming uh if you see what i told i mean yeah if you see the data reaches after the clock is what we think for setup but uh here like the delay is already there without even considering uh it's good that uh, someone noticed so i guys other so so got what uh, we told even if the flip flop was ideal in this case still there will be a setup violation okay yeah so coming back to this uh, question yeah can you guys come up with the conditions for setup and hold here so I'll, i'll explain this what it is like we have again similar two flip flops there is a combinational logic tpd is the delay for this combinational logic tcq is like clock to q delay there is an inverter here or uh, if you see the previous example there was a buffer so here is an inverter and the inverter there is a delay t inverse of course there is a t setup and t hold times for the flip flop so can you guys come up with the equations for setup and hold okay so i'll try copying this and i'll also use a jam board so this question will actually solve all the conceptual misunderstandings what we have to be honest so it's a pretty good question okay the question is clear right so we have two clocks I have to write one clock. So this is the clock which is going to the first flip flop. For the second flip flop, it will be an inverted clock with some delay. So for setup, if you consider. what will we do setup is like we'll consider maximum delay for the data and minimum delay for the clock so this this we should know what is setup so 
here in a way uh, we don't have max or min so still we will consider d max minus clock clock min yeah so i think setup is pretty uh, straightforward to be honest so can one of you come up with a equation for this I'll be back in one minute. In the meantime, you can try solving. I'll get the charger for my laptop. Okay, so I'm back. Yeah, uh, anyone with any equation? Yeah. Okay, I think can one of you unmute and just tell what's the delay in the D data path. in the chat Karnish okay. says uh, T clock to Q plus uh, T propagation delay okay T clock to Q yes T propagation delay yes that's the data time and data should come sometime before only right 
this uh, setup time what do you call so you can add setup time also okay that's that's fine uh what's the uh, thing in clock in clock if you see so in clock one thing is very clear is this t inverse is the delay plus we should add one period right uh, that thing i want okay can someone do the for the clock also uh, that's that's where the real thing is If you remember for the last problem, how we solved uh, clock period, we added to the delay. So here, what will be the clock period? If I consider this to be t, of course. If this clock has a period t, then uh, what will be the clock delay? Uh, Shashanka, there's an answer in chat. Rishi says that. Uh, t clock to q plus t propagation delay should be less than uh, clock period minus setup time. Yeah, that's what. Uh, what is this t clock? I'm asking. The equation is correct, of course. But what is this t clock? Ah, uh, yeah. Ah, uh, there are many T inverse plus t by two. Yes. This is the correct thing. So basically, the equation will be t c q. Plus TPD plus T setup. That should be less than or equal to T clock. That is T inverse plus T by two. So we'll see why T by two. If you see, I told at this clock edge, this data will be captured. We'll wait for the next clock edge. But since it's an inverted signal, we are getting the next clock edge here only. Positive clock edge for this. So the time gap is. It's just t by two. So if this was a similar signal, uh, then yeah, we should have waited for the one more full period. But it's just half period here. So that's nice. So now can you guys come up with the same thing for the hold thing? Hold thing is what. Uh, Hold if you see. Okay, I'll go to a okay only. So hold is what D men, but clock. Should be max. This what the whole thing is. So yeah. So now I think this will be easier. Data path is similar. What uh, if you see here? Data is what t clock to q plus t p d. That's the same. Data delay here also. I want the mag. Mm, I want this. The maximum clock delay. This is where the question lies. Yeah. So any of you. Ashashan, there's an answer in chat. Dharmi Dharmi says T, T inverse plus three T by two. Dharmi Dharmi, if you can unmute and tell me why, why do you think this is the answer? Uh, I just thought if it's delayed by another clock cycle, then the next 
negative that you would come at that point? At uh, which point, if you see, we have a. I mean, like a negative edge in the sense for the lock of flip flop one, not the second one. You see, I we have a positive edge here. We ah uh, we want at what at the same time, right? I mean. At what time you are considering? We want at the same time. And one more thing, uh, there is a delay here. So if you see, uh, I'll, I'll try writing it in a bit of thing. This is the clock. Uh, this is like equal. Yeah. So the other clock is inverted, and there is a delay as well. So uh, I never mentioned that the delay t inverse is less than this t by two. I didn't ever mention that, right? So what I want, I want maximum delay. That means this t inverse should be as maximum as possible. So what I'm telling now is this t inverse is even higher than this t by two. So ideally, it should have become low at this point. But this will become low at somewhere here. I hope you are getting my point here, right? So, and then the period will be same. So, if you see, this is zero, five, ten, fifteen. So, at somewhere like at around six. This clock will be inverted. So the period is same. So after five at that that is at eleven, this will again go up. Eleven. Again later, yeah, this will continue. This will. Uh, now, do you think your answer holds good? I don't know. Would it remain the same? Like it would still stay as t inverse plus. Uh, you're asking for the maximum delay, right? Yeah. See, uh, that that point is clear, right? Uh, for hold, we are considering maximum delay in the clock end. We want as maximum delay as possible, which clock can have. Okay, so it will just increase by t by two. So it will just be t inverse plus t. See, ah, uh, t inverse plus t will not happen. To be honest, using a buffer is a better idea. This is an optimized design. It's an optimized design. If we had used, I mean, buffer will be a you know, normal design. Using an inverter is an optimized design. That means here the delay is reduced. The delay is not even t inverse. It's much reduced delay. Forget about adding. We'll subtract something. Okay. Why l l? Okay. So suppose data is launched at ten. Uh, okay, from d one. At uh, d one, this data is launched at ten. This data. Should not be processed before this data is processed at the D two. Okay, this this point is clear, right? How hold happens is when this data launched at ten reaches D two. By the time this should be processed. So, if you see this previous data, it will be processed here. This is the point. This is the first what you call a raising edge. If you check this, our t inverse 
in this example is what six right at six this uh, data starts inverting so t inverse is six this this is the clock delay as such we can call this thing plus of course the whole time so this thing is what this is t inverse minus t by Uh, is it clear or uh, questions and this is expected so yeah i'll try explaining again see what we are considering is maximum uh, clock time clock delay will be maximum when t inverse is higher if you see the diagram uh, i guess yeah it will be here i think yeah this clock delay will be maximum when this t inverse is very high so what I consider is t inverse is greater than t by 2. This is t by 2. We have considered this greater than t by 2. So yes, this clock, how it will be, so I picture is this. This data will be captured here. So this data, which will be sent, the next data to be sent, this should not reach within this time. Within 11, this should not reach for ideal flip-flop. But if there is hold time also, this 11 plus hold, this 10th data should not reach at 11 plus hold time. This is t inverse minus t by 2 plus hold. This should not reach before this time. Or in other words, the previous data should be held for this much amount of time. Uh, do you guys get this? I think so. People are like confused about the minus t by 2 part. Okay. Like if you can just... So, yeah, 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 sure, sure, sure. Okay, I'll tell you how this is t inverse minus t by 2. First thing is that if, if you calculate mathematically, it's pretty easy to get. Otherwise, also like you can you can try, right? How this part is, t like is that the question or why this is the time we are using as clock delay? Is that the question? Oh. Can you explain like what is that uh, below waveform, uh, below the clock yeah. you have drawn okay. waveform? Right? Okay, this is the clock at D1, this is the clock at D2, I'll tell you what is D1, D2. This is D1, this is D2. The clock which goes here, right, This at this point, this is the waveform for that point. Because if you see, first thing it's inverted, plus there is a delay. This, uh, yeah. So this clock is pretty simple. We have a normal clock. Other clock, ideally, it would have been like if you see, uh, is there a different color? Yeah. So ideally, you should have been something like. Uh, it will be okay. Ideally, it should have been. If there was only inverter, no delay, it would have been something like this, right? 
Yeah, this would have been the ideal scenario with no delay. But now there is a delay. So what I've done, I've shifted this basically. This will become low at six instead of at zero. So the T inverse is six. In this example, what I've taken to just show you how it works. So this why I've taken six is like I wanted T inverse to be greater than T by two. So in which case this getting this equation is pretty easier. Because we want T inverse to be as greater as possible. So taken this to be greater than T by two. Uh, you got the clock uh, graph, right? At least. This part is that. Uh, yes. Right. So first thing is we got how we got this clock. Okay. So now clock we have. Whole time what we are checking. First data we would have sent already. This data uh, here. This will reach the second flip flop at some time find gravity it is already reached think this is one one reached already now this is the second data two two is here but the one should be processed in the second flip flop right this second flip flop should capture this one only after capturing one this second data should come to the d2 if it comes before that, there is a hold violation. In other words, one should be held till required time. Only after that, the shoot two should come. So now, when is this first data getting processed? At the positive edge of the clock. Where is the first positive edge of this clock? First data will be processed, first data, this thing only. So this positive edge is here. This is the positive edge. So at this point, the data is being processed. I mean, the captured data is being captured. Plus, of course, hold is there always. Plus hold will be there because the flip flop is not ideal. The point to be captured plus hold time also will consider always. So we need to do this uh, in relation with the previous thing, right? So how much time is there? This much time is there. So the second data should not come within this interval, at least it's being launched here. It should not reach the second flip flop before this point, before this point. After this, if it reaches, it's fine in ideal case in real scenario plus hold. So this point plus hold. So what's the difference, this time difference here? This is T inverse minus T by two. This is the difference here. So this much time it should stay plus hold. And I think there's a question on jitters, Q, nothing, nothing we are considering. Uh, we are considering normal clock only. So if the T hold is uh, zero, uh, so yeah. uh, the T inverse must be always greater than T by two. No, that's what we are to hold, getting, right? For the whole time, satisfied. No, 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 we are not telling that. Uh, what we are telling is we are considering very maximum point. If suppose T inverse is not greater than T by 2, T inverse is less than that. It's it's peaceful for us. We don't uh, mind. That's, that's not the worst case. As I mentioned, we'll, we'll consider the worst case always. See, the equation if you want. Uh, yeah. So the equation would be what? PCQ plus this is the data part, right? PPD. This should be greater than or equal to uh, the P clock plus P hold. This is the thing. 
basically this this is the sample uh, what you call uh, that, sorry whole, whole equation in this case if suppose you are telling t inverse is less than t by 2 this thing will be negative if this is negative it's fine right this will always be greater than a negative value fine but we are considering the worst case scenario so we want this t clock to be as greater than as as greater as possible so that's why i took it's greater than t by 2 to just show you how this thing comes still any questions on this i know i know this this may take some time to may grasp but Try understanding this thing. If you can get, if you can understand this, no, it's like the setup hold is pretty much clear. Why we did this? Any queries at any point are welcome. I have a doubt. Yeah, sure. Uh, like for the first uh, D flip flop, the uh, first uh, active edge is at t is equal to zero. Yeah. And for the second flip flop, it is after some time, right? Oh uh, yeah, after second. Uh, yeah, that's what. So, uh, yeah. So you mean like between in this interval, uh, the data should not change, right? Yeah, it should not change. Yes. Okay. Yes. Ideally, only between this interval, but flip flop has some hold time. That means this interval plus hold time it should not change. What happens if that value is negative? Yeah, that's what it is. Uh, this can be negative. Suppose if this is negative, a hold set of hold condition will always satisfy. See, uh, okay. think this is negative. Okay. That means you are having this uh, yet somewhere here only. That's okay. always fine, right because the second data is not even launched. Right, right. You're already right. capturing the uh, uh, what do you call the first data. That's great. Right. But in this case. Uh, you are trying to capture the data after the second data is launched. This is where the tension comes. Second data is already launched. We don't want that to reach the second flip flop till we capture the first data. So what's the time gap? That time gap is T inverse minus T by 2. Uh, was that clear? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so thanks to Kruti actually for this question. I think we already <laughs> surpassed that time which was given. Yeah, just some points to remember before uh, this thing. Setup is checked at the next clock edge. I mean, I've written points to remember, but uh, ideally, it's not about remembering, it's about knowing, like you should know. It's not like you are remembering that, okay, we should next clock edge, we'll add again, always some time period. No, that's not how it should be done. You should know how it is. I know like only by attending one lecture or something, it's it's not very easy to grasp. You can, you can always go through this uh, VLSI expert website. You'll get to know this. So yeah, first thing is setup is checked at next clock edge, hold is checked at the same clock edge. For hold check, we'll use minimum delay along the data path, maximum delay along the clock path, setup max delay along data, min delay along the clock. These things, if you know, you can solve pretty any, any, any question to be honest on uh, hold setup and hold. As I told before, STA is not only setup and hold. There are other constraints as well. I'm not going in depth on any of these things. Just for you guys to know, there is something called recovery and removal constraint. This is for the reset and other asynchronous signals. If you know, we have used reset in this thing, right? 
So for that reset should be switched on before some, uh, like if you're turning on the reset, it should be sometime before the clock or clock should come sometime after the reset. There should be some gap like this. They should not happen very much, you know, pretty nearby. That will cause some problems when you are having multiple flip flops. It's also one thing which is checked by the STA engineers. But uh, I don't think so there will be any questions on this on any interview. Uh, also, there is something called clock gating. Basically, clock gating with some fav fancy word. Uh, what this means is like, we'll turn on the clock only when it is required. So in this way, we are saving the power. So all these next generation processors, we are aiming at a low power uh, processors, right? So we'll do clock gating. This one small example of clock gating where we have an AND gate, clock and an enable signal. So only when clock is required, we'll turn on the enable so that clock will reach here. That's the idea of clock gating as a whole. There will be set up and hold for this. That means when we want clock, we want enable sometime before that only. So enable should be stable before some time. And after even the like clock goes, like enable should be stable for some more time. So that's what the setup and holding clock gating. And of course, there is this DRC. People who have worked in the final stages of any VLSI process will be knowing this DRC. The DRC is like the final thing with that we do. Design rule check is basically this fabrication. So like all this, our uh, semiconductors companies are uh, fabless companies. I mean, like will not have any fabricator, right? Our fabrication will not be there. So we'll send this to some fabricator, TSMC or some other thing. So they'll have a set of rules which our design should meet. That rule can be one small example is minimum width of the wire, distance between two wires. So some of the rules which the fabricator will have. So is our design meeting these rules that also comes under STA. Yeah, so that's, that's all what I had for today's session. I hope you guys got something at least. Any any questions? Any, any discussion? Anything is welcome. Yeah, I guess two more questions. Yeah. Okay, so Thanks, Sushant. This is like a really nice uh, session to understand the basics of SDA. Okay, thanks, thanks, Kruti. Thank you guys for having the session. I think Karthik also joined. <laughs> yes. Okay, I guess people will be knowing he was the chairperson last year. I okay, know. guys. Yeah, I triple chairperson, of course. Yeah. So good luck for you guys for all your coming internship, placement interviews, everything. Feel free to reach out to me for any type of queries. Yeah. That's it from my end. If there are no more queries, I think we can end the college pretty <laughs> some 25 minutes today. <laughs> Is that always recorded? So okay. sure. Okay, okay, okay. Please, please. Thank you, Thank you for the session, Shaitan. Uh, thank you, man. Thank you, guys. Good.